live from Midtown Manhattan, The Cube's live coverage of Big Data NYC, a Silicon Angle Wikibon production. Made possible by Hortonworks, We Do Hadoop, and Wham Disco, Hadoop Made Invincible. And now your co-hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back to Big Data NYC. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. In some cases, have our own event, which we're having here, Big Data NYC, covering all the action in New York City around Big Data, Hadoop World, Strata Commerce, all going on behind us right here next to the Hilton. We are here in New York City live. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon. I'm joined with uh, Jeff Kelly of Wikibon. Um, Jeff, welcome back. Our special guest here is David Parker, Vice President of SAP. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So SAP, getting a lot of buzz. You know, we were talking about open source communities. Obviously, TechEd was last week. We did a crowd chat with you guys, uh, well, with EMC and SAP, talking about HANA, in-memory storage, and all this great stuff happening around HANA, yes. which basically is big data, mm -hmm. dealing with very, in a very, very fast way. Some say it's a Ferrari uh, in the big data business. Uh, may or may debate that, but uh, it's fast. Yeah. Um, here in the open source community, you got, your presence really has signaled a lot of validation. Can you talk about the impact this week has had for you guys relative to this Hadoop ecosystem? Yeah, absolutely. We, we're, um, clearly, when we look at our business, we look at a number of different dimensions. And first and foremost, we're an applications company. And by virtue of that, we have a right, wide range and variety of different customers. And their guidance and, in fact, requests and requirements has been around how do they store large, vast quantities of data in a kind of somewhat low-cost distributed fashion, which naturally gravitates towards uh, an Hadoop cluster. So from our perspective, uh, we build out enterprise class grade applications. So we have to consider that in the context not of only the applications, but the technology that we provide. And SAP HANA is the flagship product that we have to start driving some of our real-time applications. So we were, we're kind of were asked uh, to look into this by virtue of how do we align SAP HANA into this world of big data, which is predominantly now uh, kind of somewhat owned by the term of Hadoop. And, and for us, it's a case of combining instant results from HANA with infinite storage from Hadoop, which could include uh, unstructured data, it could be emails, it could be web logs, it could be video data, image data and merge that together with what we'd call enterprise data, which is your CRM, your general ledger, your books and records. Yeah, I mean, we cover you guys. We've been to every Sapphire the past four years with theCUBE. You're one of our, our uh, you know, early uh, events we've gone to. Always love and press, SAP is business. I mean, when you go to those shows, you know, it's suits, it's people doing business, a lot mm -hmm. of big big deals. So you're in the software business. So, so you're acknowledging by coming to the show here that you're not going to discriminate against data sources, where it comes from and where it's stored. Right, it's the application and the customer's choice. Is that kind of what you're Correct. saying? Correct, so again, our ethos on how we go to market is all around customer choice. And it's all about focusing on uh, use cases that make a difference across the verticals and industries that we tend to focus on. And we focus uh, on over 25 different industries. So from that perspective, we are kind of database agnostic and kind of data source agnostic. So if our customers want to use Hadoop or they want to use some NoSQL equivalent of a, a Cassandra or a MongoDB, we're open to that at the said time. Um, we're not going to be sitting there saying that all data must reside in SAP at some point because that's just not practical. Um, so one of the uh, you know, continuing topics we've been covering over the last several years is uh, the, the topic of big data applications. Yes. Um, and we, frankly, we just haven't seen a lot of them. Uh, there's Correct. various reasons for that. Um, in some cases, it's, you know, it's, not, it's not a trivial thing to build applications mm -hmm. on top of Hadoop, uh, HBase, Hive, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, whatever uh, capabilities you're using there. Um, but obviously, as you mentioned, SAP is an application company, software yep. application uh, focusing on BI and other types of applications. Um, Talk a little bit about your approach to building big data applications, and how right. does it fit in both architecturally? Do they sit on top of something like HANA, and not mm -hmm. directly on top of Hadoop, for instance? Um, so from that perspective, and also from just a use case perspective, is it got to focus on verticals and specific business problems? Or how do you approach that? 
Yeah, and that's an interesting topic because, again, when we looked at the, the big data market, it wasn't always just about storage. I actually want to do something with that data, right? right? And that would be a sensible thing to look at, right? <laughs> so it, when we considered it, again, with our customers and looking at the market, it was a clear indication to us that we had to build out big data-specific applications. Uh, so when we look at our big data portfolio, it has the technology, which is driven by SAP HANA. On top of that, we actually make use of our data science organization. It has been within SAP for a number of years, focusing on specific industries. Mm -hmm. And utilize the skill set and the knowledge that they've gleaned over the years to build out specific applications. And by virtue of us being an apps company, we kind of have the DNA to make that mm -hmm. a success. So what you'd have seen um, probably in the past 24 hours or so, we actually did some press releases about launching two specific new applications in the big data space. The first of which is around fraud management, which uh, goes cross vertical. That's not in a specific industry because fraud happens anywhere, mm -hmm. right? And then the second one is around customer intelligence. And with that, you're actually taking buying profiles, sentiment analysis of the customer based upon how they interact in social media, based upon how they interact on your website. Uh, so you take web logs, you take Twitter feeds, Facebook feeds. All of that data is traditionally stored in something like a Hadoop. Mm -hmm. Um, but it made it difficult to build an application on top of it because it wasn't so user-friendly unless I had a team of developers to help me. So we've embraced that side of the business in terms of allowing customers to store their data there and merge that with the customer relationship management data, the CRM data, mm -hmm. the books and records data, the point of sale terminal data, infuse that data set together and allow retailers, as an example, to get a better insight in customer behavioral analysis and offer promotions, real-time offer management to their consumers. Mm -hmm. So that's where we see the power of big data, is putting all those components together right. as opposed to just the technology. So is the idea to bring that data together in, inside something like Hadoop and then move uh, you know, the valuable bits into HANA mm -hmm. to then kind of productionize those applications? Yeah, well, here's, here's the sweet spot in terms of what we have with, with HANA. We, we launched as part of our uh, SP7 release, which was launched at our, our TechEd event last week, this concept of uh, smart data access, mm. so data federation, data querying. Um, so a query can go directly into HANA. HANA looks at it by virtue of what we call virtual tables. It understands if data has been stored in any other third party data source, including Hadoop, mm -hmm. actually sends a query across to Hadoop so we can actually execute MapReduce jobs on Hadoop, get the result set, and then federate that back into HANA. So, I only have to worry about creating my application on top of HANA and let the brains and the power of HANA figure out where uh, the other data assets are. And so that's all under the cover. So as a user, I don't know. The user don't, doesn't know. And the user, let's be honest, the user doesn't care where yeah, the data is coming care. from or where it's stored. They just want the answer, right? Correct. Yeah. And, and that's the value that we bring is that we have a, a transparent layer that sits above that, which first and foremost is the application. We have an, a new release product called SAP Lumira, which is a self-service analytical tool mm -hmm. for discovery. So the user now becomes more empowered to look at granular data and ask the what-if questions that they couldn't ask previously. That being done on the raw transactional data and also being done on historical data that would come from Hadoop. Mm -hmm. But as you say, the, it's agnostic to the end user. They don't see it mm -hmm. because we've actually hidden that layer from them. So I'm curious, what do, you, what do you hear from customers when you go into customer accounts? Do they even use, the, you know, we're, we're hearing this, uh, a bubble in a sense, mm -hmm. when you're, especially when you're at a conference like Strata, Hadoop World, everyone's very knowledgeable about the technology and yeah. Hive and Pig and Flume and all these different things. But when you go to a customer who's not in this world, do they use, uh, do they call it big data? Do they, do they think they have a big data problem? What's, how, what's the perception of a, of a, you know, a, a typical customer uh, who's not really in this world necessarily? Well, first and foremost, they're not aware of big data exists in their world. And they could be some of the largest companies in the world, they could be some of the smallest. Yeah, all they know is that they have a data challenge. Uh, it doesn't have to be around volume, it could actually just be around the variety of the data when they actually want to get more into look at social media data and structured mm -hmm. data, uh, which is the variety. It could actually just be the velocity of the data. That if I'm looking at trying to get into real time offer management to my customers, what does that mean for me? So they don't actually understand the concepts behind, well, what do I need to actually build out a big data platform? So uh, part of our, our work is actually uh, one of kind of educating them in terms of what is the market doing and what are other companies in your industry doing mm -hmm. and get them up to speed on that. Then the question becomes, okay, I understand the use case, 
what technology drives that? Because some of them aren't well versed in the open source community either. It's a little, little technical issue there. <laughs> Live TV, everybody. That was Everyone's the fine. The power of Hannah in action. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it was, it was very exciting. Mountains. Yeah. So, um, That's so big deal in New York City for you. You don't know what's going to happen in Big <laughs> Apple. Exactly. Yeah, so it, it can be a case of one of educating them first, mm -hmm. let them understand what value they can derive from their data. Once they understand that, we take that data, turn it into information for them. Mm -hmm. Once they have that information, they then become knowledgeable about their business. Once they acquire that knowledge, they actually have some power about what they're going to do and become empowered on how to drive their business with further detailed insight about the business. So it's kind of those four tenants that we, we kind of walk them through, which is understand your data, understand what you can do with that data, mm -hmm. become knowledgeable about it, then you become empowered to take action on your business and accelerate that entire process. Mm -hmm. And that's where the in-memory part of HANA comes into play. Excellent. So um, I want to ask you a little bit about kind of in inside of SAP. What yeah. has been like as this as SAP is making a pretty big uh, transition from mm -hmm. uh, since the introduction of HANA, really, when yeah. HANA has really become central to your strategy, mm -hmm. um, you know, coming from uh, you know, you, you, the leading ERP company, uh, coming from that world and kind of transitioning, um, you know, it started, I guess you might say, with the business objects acquisition and starting to yep. focus on analytics and BI, uh, but I think it really accelerated uh, with HANA mm -hmm. uh, kind yep. of Hitting, hitting, the, um, hitting the market. What's it been like inside SAP as you kind of make this transition? To be honest, it's been an exciting change for us, a refreshing change, mm -hmm. some may add. And it has been that, that uh, dichotomy that we've looked at the market, we've looked at what our customers have been asking us for, and more importantly, we've had one eye on what the vision should be of the company. So HANA was a part of that in terms of accelerating on the innovation side in terms of transactional processing and analytical processing in memory. But what we also saw was this, uh, this move from on-premise solutions mm. to cloud-based solutions. So the acquisition of success factors with the human capital management in the cloud, uh, the acquisition of uh, Ariba for talent management in the cloud. We now have an HANA enterprise cloud environment where we actually have software as a service. So the change internally is that that's what we use internally now. We use HANA to drive our own systems internally in the cloud. Hmm. The other aspect is the mobility part, because we're also being asked by our customers, how can we actually enrich the user experience that may be out in the field? That if the CEO or the CFO wants to see how, what their P&L looks like, I shouldn't have to go back to a desktop machine to find that out. Mm -hmm. I can actually get information pushed to me now on a mobile device. Hmm. So when we look at the business, we look at it from the applications, which is the core. Internally, we knew that that was going to get us to new levels based upon what we were doing and customers were doing to drive it into the cloud. The analytics you touched on already, that was very key for us to get derived uh, consistent analytics from the core uh, applications and then actually make that available on demand in the cloud and then on any device, any time. Mm -hmm. with mobility. And then, yeah, you've got the, the complete picture there. Exactly. I think, yeah, the mobility aspect, uh, very important mm -hmm. um, when you're talking, especially when you're talking about more operational type analytics, uh, people out in the field, you know, they need to have that information Correct. at their fingertips and that's where mobile really comes in. Absolutely. Well, uh, we've been following you guys for a while. We're, uh, you know, definitely uh, interested to see how this plays out. Um, John, as you said, we've been at uh, Sapphire for four years now, I think. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, we watch you guys do the mobile play perfectly. I mean, you guys are the first ones, to me, the first ones in the, in the large uh, software business to recognize the iPad as a game changer on the analytics yes. side. Yes. And even before HANA was launched, uh, you guys had your eye on it. Although Hadoop kind of came later, and HANA kind of was on track, but that's been phenomenal. You know, the cloud thing, mm, you know, we've been somewhat critical mm -hmm. some here, there, success it's factors, this, what's the cloud strategy? That yep. seems to be coming into focus uh, yes. this past year. So, you know, great stuff. We're big fans of what you guys are doing and like the fact that you're saying customers choose. We've always Correct. been a big believer. Uh, you know, we cover Sapphire. We also cover Oracle Open World, so it's not the, not the same. Right. Uh, customers <laughs> don't always choose with Oracle. Yep. Um, but uh, they have good business there. We love what you're doing here with Hadoop. Great validation. Congratulations on your deal with Hortonworks. This is theCUBE. We're at Big Data NYC. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. <laughs>